trained in the proper fashion, whiz kid. Uh, yeah, I know, it's crazy. Um, no, I don't want to rob the train. Calm down, tooltips. That's not what I was planning on doing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what I was saying, right, masks. Right, what's the deal with this? Uh, why, why that in particular? Why is it that they, uh, they need to impose masks? Uh, what's this? Who are you? Oh. Como Driscoll told me expressly to shoot anyone I saw around here, but me, I'm my own man. Look at this. F hey. Careful, everybody. You must. So long. Ah! That all you boys got? Well, let's put on our mask. Because I'm about to demonstrate something quite useful here. So why am I wearing a mask right now? I ask. Why am I wearing a mask right now? I'm, uh, just curious. Can anyone think of, uh, any good reason why I would be wearing a mask right now? Uh-oh, I only have four bullets left. Alright. So why am I wearing a mask? Any guesses? Oh, is it because of the coof? I don't think so. I mean, yes, Arthur Morgan does have a highly contagious upper respiratory infection. In case you didn't notice, he has tuberculosis. Um, but at the same time, um, let's go with uh, just some regular bullets. Alright, so... Yes, he does have a highly infectious respiratory disease, yada yada, I fine. But that's not why I'm wearing a mask. I'm wearing a mask because I'm doing horrifying, evil, antisocial stuff, right? I'm not being a participating member of society. I'm wandering around murdering people. Because that's what, that's, you know, why you would extricate yourself from the norms of society, uh, right? You would. If you're going to do this sort of thing, if you're going to go around shooting people, or maybe shooting a horse, um... There we go. If you're going to do all this, right, if I'm going to murder a town, I'm probably going to want to do it anonymously. Because right. obviously I don't want to get... I don't want to be seen, I don't want to be recognized, I want to distance myself maybe, I don't know, socially or something like that? Uh, distance myself from uh, from those around me in society. I want to distance myself even from society, I might even say. These ain't my horses. I can just do this, right? So if I'm just not a uh, part of civilized society, I might as well kill the horses that are part of civilized society. Um, okay. I'm going to reload, because you guys see what I'm getting at? I mean, this was this was way overkill, and I had no reason to do any of that. But, 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 and I'm not going to auto not to my auto save. No, sorry. All right, uh, let's go back. Let's, let's, I, I made my point. I put on my mask, and I committed my crimes, and I basically acted against out of society. So why does one wear a mask? It's not to keep one's, not just to keep one's anonymity. It's to distance oneself from the people around you. Yes, anonymity, but that anonymity serves a purpose. Right? The purpose can be nefarious, like I want to murder a town. Okay, fine. But it can also be something like, I don't want to... Uh, right, so it, it... 
the anonymity of a mask can place a a distance between you and the other person. Not just the six foot difference that we're supposed to stand at, but it can place this distance between you and I of us not <clears throat> us not seeing each other. And so us not communicating with each other, us not being part of the same community as one another. And I'll say for an urbanite, that's not a problem because what do you do if you're on the subway in New York City? You look straight down and you do not make eye contact with anybody. Because if you make, a, make eye contact with somebody, then that you're, you're some disturbing weirdo uh, who, you know, likes to, I don't know, associate with other human beings or something, so, or something else so terrible, right? Uh, as Kevin pointed out, right, um, I see it as more of a need of affirmation and a sense of solidarity uh, that takes the unfortunate road of control. So masks, right? So there's that too. It's a kind of solidarity, but it's it's a kind of anonymous solidarity. It's replacing genuine community with uh, with conformity, right? It's exactly the kind of thing that that an urbanite would do, culturally speaking, right? Somebody who is uh, of urban culture, as opposed to the the more rooted rural culture where a community is an interaction between people who know each other or who at least are familiar with each other or at least want to see each other if we want to be that reductionist about it which we can be that's fine i'm fine being reductionist about such things um if that's if that's what we're talking about right if we're talking about masks in the sense of social distancing not in the weird kind of uh not in the euphemistic kind of way but what oh hey an auto save auto save yeah let's yeah right but social distancing in terms of in terms of placing a a psychological distance between you and me when we interact in society that's the kind of thing which is perfectly native to an urban culture, but radically alien to an urban to a uh, rural culture. Right? Um, you, you guys are more or less rural folks. What do you do when you pass by somebody on the street? Uh, Auto's like, yeah, listen, we're in the south. I'm thinking, all right, Kevin, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, no, no. Uh, but what do you do when you just pass by somebody on the street? Uh, you say hi. You say hello. If you're driving and there's somebody walking their dogs on the sidewalk, you might wave. Right? You don't do that in the city. You're a weirdo if you do that in the city. The only alternative, the only, the only other place other than out in the country where you do that is on the water. Right? If you're on a boat, you wave. That's the, the courtesy. Right? Uh, but that's again, that's because there isn't this kind of um, what do you what do you call it? There isn't this kind of very close interpersonal interaction, so you need to make up for it in a way. Right? But there is nothing making up for it in this case, right? If you're in the city, if you're in, uh, in an urban environment, you're not interacting in this kind of friendly, happy kind of a way with people, right? You're just doing your business. You're isolated in your little bubble, and you're doing what you need to do. And there are other people in their little bubbles doing what they need to do. And you don't interact with each other unless you need to or unless you run into each other. Like, literally. So wearing a mask has no effect on that kind of a lifestyle. Of course, you're just wandering around. You're not interacting with people. You just exist next to each other, right? So the urbanites for whom the mask actually works as a medical solution to an extent, not perfectly, but to an extent, right? Fine. And for them, not only does it work in a medical sense, but it works culturally. It is not a detriment to their cultural interactions. Their social interactions are not impeded by the wearing of a mask, by the anonymity that that provides, because urban people are already anonymous to each other. They don't understand, and they're incapable of understanding, really, even if it's explained to them, and trust me in this, I've tried very hard to explain it to them. They're incapable of understanding that, one, it's not medically effective in cases where people are already spread out. And then further, 
it, they don't understand that it is a cultural and social imposition. Right? So they're so they will say things like, "Well, it's just a mask. Well, why don't you just wear the mask, man? No, it's not a big deal. It's just an inconvenience. It's not like it's a medical. It's not." You're not going to be inhaling carbon dioxide. And yeah, maybe there's a minor concern with that. I'm, I dismiss that more or less. It's not a big deal. Fine. Uh, for some people it might be, but uh, for most people it's not. It's not It's not a real concern. For me it's not a real concern, the carbon dioxide thing. But what is a concern is me actually talking to people and interacting with people and being a human being in a community. If I want to actually be a human being in a community, I'm not going to be able to do so if I am isolated in this in this kind of a way. You know? What is this? Oh, look, more of them. Get your backs into it. Use your legs. That's what you have them for, for Pete's sake. Don't put your hands there and push. Come on. Show me something! You better not drop it! You better not! Come on, you pair of cream pies! Do you want this rally to happen or not? Why does this always happen to me? <laughs> Have some respect. Nah, let's steal your horse. Oh, darn it, where'd your horse go? Oh. Devil, do your worst. Okay, I'm gonna loot ya. Hey, you. Don't mind, do you? Oh, he's got a letter to Pa. Let's read it. This is gonna be fun. Before we before we end it for tonight, let's end it on a nice note. Instead of me murdering a town, let's uh, let's uh, let's beat up a KKK member and read his note to his Pa. Sorry, I left the house in such a huff. For that, I must apologize, but the thing is, you're wrong. No offense. I simply do not care what Jesus or anyone else says. I'm a student of science, and as such, and having read a lot into the subject, I have to assert my position again that commingling between the races is not merely wrong, but also dangerous. I mentioned this earlier about, about these kinds of things being backed by really terrible science. People don't believe this. But this is actually really the case. This was the scientific view. But to be quite clear, this is not a position, but a scientific fact. I have read all the research. Look at all. Look at big cats. They're tigers and lions and leopards and things. They're all different. So that sort of proves it. The same with trees. There's more than one kind of tree or colors. There's red and blue and so forth. So it is with races. White people like us to dominate and others to do work to which they are suited. This is science. I'm done with school. I'm sorry about the money you spent, but the place is full of fools. I'm heading out west. I'll make my fortune there and prove my theory is correct. I'm not an arrogant blowhard, as you so rudely put it, but a man concerned with saving the human race. I'm sorry we parted on such terms, but I'm afraid I have no patience for fools. And to hear you, Mother and Teddy, speak well, I felt nothing but shame. And you all well-educated and white. Shame on you. Well, I'm a man of destiny and I plan to prove it. Nothing will stand in my way from forming a white utopia full of people just like me. This is insanity! Indeed. Yes, that is insanity. I'm going to loot your dead friends for a moment. And then I'm going to untie you, let you run along your way. And I will burn your cross for you. And then we'll call it. Um, so that was fun. This was very much the, uh, this is very much, like I said, this was very much the scientific worldview at the time, the, the, the overly scientific worldview. Um, have some respect. Just um, leave me. I really don't have any respect, though. That's the thing. There. Let's do that. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, let's have a snack, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, last thing, WizKid says, uh, 